Hello everybody out there in the glorious land that is the internet. Good morning or good afternoon, uh, whatever the case may be for you. My name is Adam and I'm coming to you relatively live for the first time for Contrastly.com. Today we're going to be taking a quick but a very important look at how you can use the power of presets to really jumpstart your creativity and your post-processing workflow in Adobe Lightroom. We're going to start off with what's called an SOOC, a straight out of the image, excuse me, straight out of the camera raw file, and then quickly edit that image using some of Contrastly's very own presets, and then going a little further and customizing some of the settings so we can end up with the photograph that we want. First of all, for those who might be completely new to the idea or completely new to photography and post-processing in general, what a preset does is allow you to apply multiple processing functions to your image simultaneously with one, you know, one click. And that's going to let you achieve, at least initially achieve, a specific look that you're looking for. Uh, you could also think of presets as being filters, although I think uh, the word filter may place Lightroom presets in a little bit of a box. Um, this came from, you know, the Instagram craze. I don't, I don't have a problem with Instagram. I have, I have an Instagram. I love Instagram, but these are more than filters. And I strongly encourage you though, to make every photograph that you take, make your photograph your own. And you're going to do that with a little fine tuning. And that's what we're going to teach you how to do here today. Aren't you excited? Of course you are. So let's just jump right in and get to work. Okay. Uh, so the image on the screen in front of you is our base image. It's not been processed. It's came right out of the camera. And we're going to start by going in from, and we're using Adobe Lightroom Creative Cloud, going in from Adobe's library into the develop module. So let's click on develop. If you go over to the left, we see our preset panel drop down. And there they are. Now, as far as picking a preset, um, the day I made this photo, it was it was the end of late last fall. It was cold. It was rainy. Uh, I was just dangerously sleepy. And got up early to go out. Uh, virtually went swimming to get this get this shot. So I want to keep the colors. I want to keep the color there, but I want to keep the color very subdued. I don't want a lot of bright bright yellows and oranges or anything that is, um, might be considered uh, upbeat color, I guess you could say. I want to preserve the mood of the image. And we're going to do that by looking at some presets that Contrastly has just released. They're called the Contrastly Desaturated Cinematic Bundle. And what these are going to do is really take down the vibrance, take down the the contrast in some cases, but take down the vibrance and the saturation of an image to really give you that, in most cases, cool, subdued color look. And that's what we're going for here is some nice, organic, earthy tones to the photograph. And what Adobe has done for you is provided this little navigator pane. I call this the cell phone pane. And of course, if you don't want to use it, you can turn it off just as easy as you can turn it back on. What it will allow you to do is as you scroll through your preset options, it will give you a real-time view of what each preset is going to do to the image. And it's actually a pretty good thing to have when you're trying to pick out a preset to match your photo. So as we scroll through here, we're going to keep an eye on the navigation panel. And we're getting into the dehaze and Man, is that dehaze feature, the new dehaze feature on the latest build of Lightroom, it's just amazing. But we're not quite there yet. No. Was it three? Was it four? Oh, it's four. Five, four. Let's click on the desaturated cinematic specialty four. And that will apply the preset, and that is what we're going to start with. I like how that looks. So now we're ready to go back into our develop panel. Let's get out of the presets. And start customizing some of our options as far as the preset is concerned. Like I said, I like how it's taken down the color, 
and it's we've kept a lot of the highlights here in the water but at the same time we have kind of darkened up the background especially darkened up some areas of the photo that I would really like to have some more detail in and also has put a little bit of a blue cast on it more so than I would like so let's just take care of that blue tone first before we do anything else and we're going to do that by going into our tone curve panel which is what you see here and right clicking anywhere in the box or any of this big tone curve box and flatten curve this is will go for PC or Mac versions of Lightroom and that's going to take away that blue almost a little too much so let's bring that back up slightly just to cool that down and I like that so now let's take care of some local adjustments in the image go back into our basic panel and the difference between what we're going to do now the local adjustments and what are called global adjustments is that it's virtually self-explanatory but the global adjustments will apply edits to the entire image local adjustments will apply it to specific parts of the image and that's what we're going to do now and honestly I use local adjustments for 70 percent of most of my processing especially when you get into the landscape images where you have a lot of different different dynamic dynamic ranges between the colors uh, it's really a powerful tool of Lightroom so let's start off with something we call a graduated filter it's virtually the same effect as a graduated neutral uh, graduated neutral density filter that you might uh, mount to your lens before you before you make your exposure um, except in this case we're doing it in post so let's just click on the graduated filter this gives us our graduated filter drop down and start at the top we click drag down and now we have the split pane, everything north of the dot, you know, everything above this line, that's where your edits will be applied. Everything below that line should be left alone. No edits applied. So we're going to bring out the shadows of the background. Let's start with an exposure. That's already did a lot for us. And then let's bring up those shadows. Good. That's looking better already. So we're leaving everything, for at least for the time being, below the line, leaving it unchanged, everything above the line. We're applying a little more exposure. And we might even throw in a little more saturation to bring out that nice green moss on those rocks. I think that'll be fine. So moving on, we have taken care of the majority of the background, but we've still got this little area to the right. Where yeah, so let's put a little more detail in there. We could really use a little more detail on that. So let's leave the graduated filter and opt for the radial filter. It's a, virtually the same type of effect. It's going to be local adjustment, except here is going to be a little circle, or as big of a circle as you want to make it. Now, two options you have to consider when you're using the radial filter tool. And that is whether or not you want to apply your adjustments inside the circle or outside the circle. And you're going to toggle back and forth of these with our invert mass box. Right now it's checked. So that means everything inside the circle will be affected. Let's demonstrate that real quick. Getting really bright inside the circle as we increase the exposure, decrease the exposure, everything goes down. And we uncheck the box. The opposite is true. Everything outside goes down in exposure. Increase it. Everything goes up in exposure. So there again, we want to invert the mask so everything inside is affected, not the outside. Bring up the exposure. Bring up a little bit of the shadow. And that's looking pretty good match up the saturation a little bit now this is an interesting problem that you can run into in using local adjustments we've almost got a little too much highlight in this water here 
And there's a number of ways we can take care of this. Uh, the easiest way for us right now is just to simply make another radial filter, put it over the areas, a little too much highlights, and simply reduce the highlights. It's that easy. All right, let's get out of the filter tool. Take a look at the image. Background's looking pretty good. So now we can move on to this little patch of leaves in the foreground. And the foreground is where I really want the viewer's eyes to be drawn to first. That's where I want the most, the most detail and really the most color. We're gonna get into that in just a second. So let's open up our radio filter tool one more time. Click and drag, get it roughly the size of the area we want to adjust. Bring up the exposure and the shadows. Bring that out a little more to match the shape. And down to give this happy little leaf the attention he deserves. <laughs> so let's bring those shadows up a little more. It's really making that area pop. Maybe add a little more clarity to it. A little more sharpness and why not be bold and let's throw a little more color in there even though we're using the desaturated cinematic that's the area the leaves is the area that I want the most color of the image to be so let's up the saturation on that it's looking great a little more exposure good so now we can go to our split panel and see where we're standing right now and our processing and the difference is, is, is readily apparent. We've went from the raw image file to the left, we've applied a preset, we've customized it, and we're left with the nearly finished image on the right. So let's just finish this up. I overall like the look, but I want to put a little more detail in the overall shadow of the image so let's up the shadows to about 20 down those highlights a little bit bring up the general exposure not too much and then let's add let's just go crazy with it let's add a little bit more saturation to the entire image like so let's go to 15 And in just a couple minutes from start to finish, we have completely processed a raw file. Let's look at it one more time. And it really is just that simple, folks. That is the true power of post-processing presets. It lets you do a lot of work and a relatively short amount of time, um, all the while helping you make sure that your images are the absolute best they can possibly be. You can find all the presets that you saw here along with an unreasonably large amount of great photography tips and articles that will really make you a stronger shooter over at the website www.contrastly.com. Once again, this has been Adam for Contrastly. Thanks for watching.